Hi, my name is Connor Redmond, and this presentation is a high-level introduction to the Maybetis Persistence Framework. This presentation will be of interest to you if you are a Java developer who needs to store data to a database and thinks that the current approaches using JPA and JDBC are too complicated. If so, Maybetis might just be the ticket. In the next few slides, we will describe the problems of working with persistence, show how Maybetis can help, show some code examples, look into the advantages Maybetis has over other approaches, and finally show you how to recognize the scenarios where Maybetis might be a good fit for your application. The problem with moving data between applications and a relational database is that typically the field names, types, and structures don't quite line up, and a developer often needs to map from one domain to the other. Uh, some examples of simple mapping issues could be differences between the database column names and the names of the fields in the Java objects you're storing data in. You may also need to account for differences in the type of fields on both the Java and database sides. More complex mapping issues can be seen when comparing the structural differences between tables and Java object graphs. In the Java example above, the association between a parent blog object and a child comment object is a one-way reference. But when representing the same relationship in a database table using a foreign key, the association is a bi-directional relationship. Another mapping issue occurs when there is a big difference in the granularity of structures between the Java and database sides. For example, a single address class on the Java side might be represented as multiple address, state, and country tables on the database side. The main takeaway here is that mapping between these very different structures can be quite hard, and any framework that helps simplify this mapping, like MyBetis, is a very good thing. So that's the problem. Now let's take a look at the solution, MyBetis. The essential point of any persistence framework, like MyBetis, is to help reduce the complexity of storing and retrieving data from a relational database. MyBeta sits on top of the JDBC API and helps hide from the developer many of the low-level JDBC calls. MyBeta is similar to Hibernate JPA in that they both help simplify the interaction with a database. It's different from JPA in that it uses a SQL-centric approach, which we'll see later. If you'd like to try out some of the MyBetis code samples shown later in this presentation, I've created a sample project on GitHub that helps set up some of the prerequisites you'll need, such as a database, we use a H2-based in-memory embedded database for easier setup, it comes with some tables defined, data pre-populated, and everything else needed to be up and running quickly. The link is here. When adding the MyBetis library to your own application, there are three main options. Use the library directly, use a MyBetis Spring library if you work with Spring, or use a Spring Boot starter package. The Spring Boot option requires the least amount of configuration to get started. That's the option we use in the sample project for this presentation. More help on building with MyBetis can be found on the MyBetis.org site, along with the latest version numbers. Before we delve into the code, let's take a quick look at the design pattern behind MyBetis. MyBetis is an implementation of the data map design pattern, as described by Martin Fowler in his book, Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture. A data mapper, or more simply a mapper, is a class that sits between your domain objects and the database and helps transfer data between them. That's a theory. Let's look at some examples next. MyBatis provides two main approaches for mapping between Java objects and database tables. For mapping relatively simple tables and queries, I typically use the annotation option, like the at select annotation shown here. For dealing with more complex tables, or if we want to use advanced features like Dynamic SQL, then I'd suggest the XML-based mapping. We'll take a more in-depth look at both of these options next. SQL comes with a built-in alias feature that can map the column name to any label you want. My betas piggybacks off this feature to provide the OR mapping. For example, in the SQL shown, 
the database column uname has an alias username. MyBetas reuses the same native SQL alias feature to perform the mapping from database columns to fields in Java objects. So when mapping the results of a SQL query into a Java object, the ID column maps to the ID field, the uname column maps to the username field, and the L name column maps to the last name field. If you enable Groovy compilation in your project, you can use the triple quote feature to paste in large SQL queries right into your code. The sample project has an example of this. XML-based mapping is a little trickier since the SQL statements are no longer co-located with our interface but placed in a separate XML file. There are three main parts of this. Firstly, a book class is used to store the result of the find all books query. We have an interface just like before used to define the DAO operations. And the bit different is that we have a new XML file which defines the mapping from database results to Java fields. One reason for choosing the XML based mapping is if you need to dynamically change the SQL at runtime. An example of a situation where dynamic SQL could be used is for a web search form with a number of optional fields. We can use the MyBatis if tags to optionally include SQL predicates when certain fields in the Java search form object are populated. In this case, depending on what fields were populated, we could have three different SQL select statements that were generated. When a first name is included, or a last name, or both names. Given these two choices, which do you choose? My advice would be to use annotation-based mappers where possible, as these are generally easy to write and understand. If the queries you want are more complicated, in that they require dynamic SQL or collections or nested selects, then you'll need to use XML-based mappers which are more verbose, but also more powerful. The SQL-centric approach adopted by MyBetas has a number of advantages for the developer, which we'll take a look at in the next slides. If comparing MyBetas to alternatives like JPA, one advantage over JPA is that most of the developers already have some basic SQL skills, so it's fairly easy to jump into. The alias-based mapping used by MyBetas is already built into MySQL. Dynamic SQL is straightforward. Mapping complex relationships between tables can be built on top of SQL's existing join feature. MyBetas is especially handy to use if you have a lot of predefined SQL reports that you need to get into your Java application. It's very easy to just paste your SQL into an XML or annotation-based mapper. When using JPA, the generated SQL it builds for you can be hard to find and even harder to understand. But with MyBetas, you always have full visibility to the SQL used. This can help avoid issues like the dreaded n plus one selects issue. Sometimes there are specific features of your underlying database that you need to access in order to maximize performance. For example, you may need to use database-specific optimizer hints or database-specific features for performance reasons. JPA tries to be database agnostic, which can make it harder to embed database-specific features that you need to improve performance. MyBetas has no such barriers. During this presentation, we looked at some of the underlying reasons why object relational mapping is hard. Anything that makes that mapping easier is a good thing. And my beta's trick of reusing the SQL alias allows you to do a lot of the mapping for free while still having perfectly valid SQL. We saw building dynamic SQL and delivering pre-existing complex SQL reports is something that MyBetas excels at, and is significantly easier than the JPA equivalents. We showed how the SQL-centric approach used by MyBetas makes it easier to get started, and can actually help with performance and debugging. We hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to MyBetas. Thank you.